Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in India, many students, particularly students from the discipline of economics, produce their PhD thesis based on NSSO data. So in the initial days of their research, I have seen them struggling a lot uh, just to get a grip on NSSO data. So they waste whole lot of time to understand NSSO data and often get misguided. And that damage is quite irreparable. My intention is to put them on track right from the beginning so that uh, they get a good grip on the data structure. This will not only be helpful for PhD students, but also for students from public policy background who want to understand how most of the socioeconomic statistics gets produced and how to verify them if uh, they have any doubts. So most of the statistics such as, let's say, rate of poverty, unemployment rate, migration, indebtedness, et cetera, et cetera, are published by different agencies time to time. So in this video and my subsequent videos, I will uh, explain how to deal with NSSO data. So if you are dealing with NSSO data, you need to follow three basic steps. First step is the data extraction. So data extraction, from the notepad file. So nowadays you really don't need to extract data from notepad file because it comes in any format you want. So it can be extracted directly into Stata format. It can directly be extracted into SPSS format, uh, anything you like. But nevertheless, it, if you learn how to import data from uh, text files, it, 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 it helps you to learn uh, how to extract data from notepad or text files uh, for your future uh, workings. So that is, the first, that is the first thing. Second thing is creation of weight. So as you know, NSSO data is basically a sample data which is collected from Indian household. And such large scale service data should help you to predict for the population. And that's why these weights are needed to project for the population. So let's consider a hypothetical situation. Let's say there are there is a country in which only 10 households are there and government doesn't have resources to collect data from all 10 households. So it has decided to collect data only from three households and that data will be used for to, to project the consumption for the whole country. So if the government decides so that that means it should collect at least one sample from each of the representative category. And then it must know what are the frequencies in that particular category. Let me illustrate this with an hypothetical case. Uh, so let's see here in the table one, I have the whole population data. So it consists of the whole population, 10 households are there. So you see there are three types of consumers. So one is from 50,000 bracket. The other one is from 80,000. The third one is from 150,000. Now government has, in the table two, this is the sample data. So government has collected data from first sample, which is name of the household is A. So he or she uh, is having yearly consumption of 50,000. Similarly, it has collected data corresponding to second category, which is your 80,000 category, and which is the fourth household over here. So, and uh, corresponding to the 1,50,000, it has chosen this particular household, 1,G. And uh, so, government knows at the same time what are the frequencies or weights of the each of these categories right for example for example 50000 category how many households are there only three households in 80000 category how many households are there three households and in 150000 category there are four households so now since i have both the data i have the their consumption data as well as I know how many households of that particular category are there in my country. So I can multiply these two numbers get to get the total consumption for that particular category. 
and if i get those numbers so 150000 is the for, for the first category 240000 is for the second category and 6 lakhs for the third category so if i add these three numbers i can easily arrive at 9 lakh uh, 9 lakh 90000 so these weights basically helps you to project for the populations and remember these weights are nothing but the frequencies right so you can easily calculate if you know if you have a representative for representative sample from a population and you know what are their frequencies and what are the representative values so you can make use of those numbers those two numbers to arrive at the population figure so uh, therefore so how to how to create these words that in that will be given in the instruction file which I'll, I'll i'll come back to that part later on so once you extract your data in the next step what you must do you must create words by following the instructions given in certain documents and then save that file so extracted file third important thing what i realized uh, during my analysis is understanding the data structure if you understand the data structure well then there won't be any problem to do any kind of analysis you can match each and every table whichever whatever is there in the report but if you do not have a clear understanding of the data structure you won't be able to arrive at any of the uh, results given in the report document so the under, understanding of data structure is the most crucial thing <clears throat> so the data you extract from notepad file it could be for household level information and it could be for the individual level information so therefore you need to keep in mind which file corresponds to what category otherwise you will be in trouble when you need to combine both information from both these files anyway we'll discuss this uh, in our subsequent videos uh, let me show you an nsso data folder related to consumer expenditure of 68th round and uh, you can keep your data in any drive in in your computer which whatever is convenient to you so i have kept my data in uh, because there is a shortage of space in my computer so i have kept my data in my pen drive so let me uh, <clears throat> take you take you to the pen drive uh, yes this, this. so here you can see the in this folder so i just go back so here this 68 ce this contains data of the 68th round consumer expenditure so here what you can see you can see there are three folders one is data folder other is multiplier folder the third one is supporting documents and the fourth one is readme file so let us first have a look at the data folder so if you go to data folder you see there are one one two three that four that's how this whole data file runs into 11 parts so 1 to 11 so there are 11 data files which are in text format it is in raw format uh, now if you go to multiplier documents we will come back later on let us go to supporting documents supporting documents most important document is your questionnaire so if you go to this schedule 68 schedule 68 is basically the questionnaire so let me share with you the questionnaire uh, for 68th round uh, so yes this is the 68th round questionnaire so here if you go to the questionnaire you see the whole questionnaire it's a i think a 10 pages questionnaire 10 to 15 uh, 22 pages questionnaire so you can see here the whole questionnaire is divided into certain blocks for example let us have a look at this particular thing this it mentions zero right so this means it's a zero block then if you go to the next one it says block one then you scroll down you can find 
block two then you can scroll down further you will be able to see the third block corresponds to household characteristics so it stores information about household household uh, level it stores information at the household level if you go to fourth block fourth block you see here it says demographic and other particulars of the household members so basically this fourth block stores information at the individual level and that is how you can move on and you see block number 5.1 onwards it says consumption of serial pulses so it records your uh, household wise individual household wise consumption of different items which are listed here so this continues till uh, till uh, 11th block the item wise consumption goes till 11th block and yeah till 11th block you can see that like till 11th block the item wise expenditures are recorded if you go to block 12 block 12 says summary of consumer expenditure so block 12 data records the summary of uh, all cereals you consumed all pulses you consumed all milk products you consumed so it basically summarizes the whole blocks whatever you have seen in the previous case and here this questionnaire ends at 13 block though this 13 block is not useful for us the data you have till 12th block so all that 11 data sets you have seen that contains information up to 12th block now let me go back to something there is another uh, useful thing is uh, this one i just show you layout file so what is this layout file this layout file let me share with you the layout file and uh, here you need to understand the relation between layout file and the questionnaire that is very more that is most important thing to understand if you understand that well there won't be any further issue so let me just show you now see look at here so if you look at the this item it says total number of level is 11 so in this uh, layout file it says the total levels are 11 so there are 11 levels and now let us focus on what this each level means to us so you look at this one so first thing it says level one and within parenthesis you see block one and two what this block blocks one and two means blocks one and two means it this these are the blocks corresponding to the questionnaire so whatever information you have collected through using your questionnaire block one and block two those information get stored in level one right so now let us move on to the next level so what is your next level next level is level two and level two contains information of what as you can figure out easily it contains information of block three and not only for block three it contains information from block three but only for item number one to fifteen so that means this level two does not consider all information from informations from block three it consists of information only from item number one to fifteen now let us move on and let us see what is there in level three if you go to level three you see level three contains information of block three item number 16 to 25 so you can see like one level one level may not necessarily contain the information of a full block it may con consist of information of maybe two blocks it may con contain information of half of a particular block it may contain information of one and half block so anything might happen so you need to be careful when you are looking at this layout file that what information corresponds to which level 
and then how this uh, which block corresponds to this particular label that also you need to be a bit careful so if you if you scroll down you can go at the end and you see the whole this layout file ends at something level 11 right level 11 so level 11 consists of what consists of information from from block 12 as i showed you earlier in the question when i was describing the questionnaire that block 12 consists of the summary of all the expenditures right so that means the whole 12th block of the questionnaire is the data for whole all 12th block of the questionnaire is stored into 11 levels and the data i showed you that corresponds to all these 11 levels so what first level corresponds to a particular text file which is noted denoted as 01 t01 similarly second level corresponds to the level 2 information that is another text file which is t02 so that's how the i show when i showed you the data files there were 11 files so each of those 11 files corresponds to each of these blocks so this is the relation between uh, this is the relation between the questionnaire and uh, this layout file so you must uh, need to understand this problem there is one more very important document which can give you a snapshot of the whole data set and let me go back and share with you that particular document so here if you go there is something called readme file so i just show you i just open that i have opened this readme file let me share with you uh, that readme file what is there in that readme file so you can see this readme file here look concentrate here so readme file it says see data file name so this data file name corresponds to the file name which i showed you in the data folder so it says what this is level one record level one records how many records are there so in first level there are 1,1662 records. That means there are 1,1662 households from which this consumer expenditure details were collected. Similarly, level two, level two records, and that corresponding data file is this one, R6801T1L02. So this is the level two data set. How many records are there? These many records. Once again, one lakh one thousand six sixty-two. So you can get a get an understanding in each level how many observations are there, and uh, how many levels are there. What is their data file name? So you can look for this data file name in your data folder within the whole NSSO sixty-eight folder. So this is the first useful thing it, uh, the readme file gives you. There are other usefulness of this readme file. I just explain you in a moment. So the other important instructions which are given in this particular readme file is the weight generation rules. So how, how do you how do you I told you what 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 is the interpretation of weights? Weights is nothing but the frequencies. But how do I create weights in this data in this NSSO data? So here, when you create in a far, in in our in subsequent videos, we will explain how to create weight. But we will be following the same rules same rules which is mentioned here. So we will be using this same rule so final weight will be used will be creating by using this formula mlt by 100 and then mlt by 200 will be using this formula so it gives you instruction it not only gives you the records of the data it gives you the instructions for creation of weight and at the same time there is another thing which is common primary key for identification because you see nsso data is a huge data set there are so many variables 
so you can't store all the variables in one file so that's why the data has been divided into 11 files now half of some of the information may be in file one corresponding to a particular household some of other information may be in level two in some other file which is let's say in level two some other information is in level three so if you want to bring information corresponding to a particular household all information corresponding to a particular household in one file then you need to create something called primary key or primary identification key right so that means you need to identify each and every household uniquely so how do you identify each and every household in the data set uniquely so here is the rule for identification so we will be making use of only these four variables to create a primary key so this this if you if you if you if you want to get a snapshot of any nsso data set get into the data folder have a look at the readme file just look at the readme file readme file clearly explains all the characteristics of the data how many records are there how many uh, what is the rule for weight creation what is the rule for primary identification number creation you will get whole lot of things so in our in our subsequent videos i will explain how to i'll show you how to extract the data from the text file then how to create the weights and then many other things i will be showing you so uh, hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching